Hey guys, um, just getting back to the um, the Bible study. I, the last week was a bit of a write off just because of the um, warfare and other things. Um, so, just wanted to show you one that I was given the other day, and it's quite simple. All right, so we'll start off. Start off here. So it's it's when Jesus is buried in the tomb. So if we have a look um, in Luke, okay. So it was the first, and these are just summaries. That it's not the exact. Um, it's not all the verses. So, but I've just these are the, just the key points. So it was the first day of the week. It was very early. They were bringing spices pre prepared for the body, and. There were, it says that there were certain others with them. Okay, in Luke. In Mark, it specifically states it was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, James and Salome. Then in Matthew, what do we get? Um, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. Okay, so we learn it was very early it was dawn it was and okay so in Luke they found the stone rolled away in Mark um, they asked who shall roll the stone away um, clearly it was just them so they didn't have didn't seem to have a group with them okay um, because and then they saw it was rolled away in Luke, they found the stone rolled away. But just to say, um, who shall roll the stone away, clearly shows there was only a small number of them. In Matthew, it's very different. It was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled the stone away and sat upon it. Okay, And the angel's countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. We go up to Luke, all right? They went inside and then they found, they went actually in there, okay? They went inside and they found, they didn't find Jesus, they didn't find his body, but there were two men who stood by them in shining garments. Shining, okay? So it's a little bit like how we go the three robes. Oops, okay? He was, for Luke, he was arrayed in a gorgeous robe. For Mark, he was clothed in purple. And for Matthew, he was stripped and put in a scarlet robe. Okay, so... Now, if we go to Mark, it's not a shining garment. And it's not two men, okay? It's just a young man sitting on the right side of where the body was. So... Um, saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. So in a long, it was still in white, but not in shining garment. Okay. He said, be not frightened. So in Matthew, he's an angel sitting on the stone. Okay. And it's on the outside. So he sat upon it. So this, the Matthew group didn't even get to go in. Didn't get to go in and look for Jesus at all. Okay. Um, the angel answered and said to the women, Fear not yet, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where they, the Lord lay. And Mark. Okay. Be not frightened. Um... Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Okay, so kind of similar, but a little bit different. Um, in Luke, bowed their faces to the earth. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. So, but this, you know, very profound statement. And then we get, we start to understand here, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary. Okay, so Joanna just comes out of nowhere because um, 
in Mark, it's Mary and the mother of James and Salome, and that's it. So where'd Joanna come from? So Joanna's in the Luke group. All right, but down here, it's the same. Mary Magdalene, the other Mary. This, we learn that there's also a Joanna, okay, that were with them. So I need to look into that. Um, told the apostles. So it was, yes. Um, told the 11. Yeah, so they, they, when they ran back, they told the 11 and they did not believe, but Peter ran out. Okay, and just remember with Peter, where Peter denied Jesus three times, but then Peter runs out now. Okay, he's full of faith. And he's just like, he's he's learned his lesson. Okay, he's, he's learned something. He's ran out, like just sprinted. And then he saw the linen clothes laid by themselves, wondering in himself at what was to come. Okay, so he was... He was pondering what was going to happen. He he was aware of something was going to happen. Okay, so then we go down to Mark. What happened? So he appeared. He appeared to Mary Magdalene. Um, hang on, where are we? Um, so go and tell your disciples and Peter. He goeth before you in Galilee. So there's a call here to say, tell your disciples and specifically Peter and go before you in Galilee. Um, then he appeared to Mary Magdalene. He then appeared to two, which is so, so different here, right? Like he appeared to, to two. They told the others, neither believe them either. He then appeared to the 11 and, and rebuked them for their hardness of heart and unbelief. It's the lazy church. Okay, he rebuked them. It's like how he didn't eat. He didn't eat with them in the um, in the Last Supper. Okay, this all this just it just gets deeper and deeper when you start looking at it. Okay, that he rebukes the, the Mark group and the Matthew group, right? Because the the lack of belief, the hardness of heart. But he never rebukes the Luke group. He gives them more. So, and then, yeah, very similar. Go tell your disciples, behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There you should see him. Behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail, came and held, held him by the feet and worshipped him. Okay, so very different. Um, they, you know, they worshipped him. They, you could be seen that, you know, they had, you know, extreme regret. They had no faith initially, and then they came and they worshipped him. They they gave over themselves to him. So, you know, it can be it can be kind of translated in a few different ways. But you can see there are massive differences between these three. Like, honestly, and this I was led to this by the Holy Spirit. Like, I literally I flicked this scripture, and I was just like immediately knew just in my spirit. I knew that this was another. Um, it was another difference. And so I just looked it up and it was, it was right there it was straight away. So, you know, thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for giving me this because it just shows that there's so many of these typologies that are throughout. And, um, and yeah, it's, there's, there's probably like, there's probably hundreds of them. Um, but they all add a little piece to the equation, you know, a little piece to the story. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to look into this a little bit more as to why Joanna is mentioned specifically, um, because the way this works from, from what we can understand is, you know, obviously they're talking to three different groups of people, but they're also providing additional details at the same time. It's not just one thing. These chapters, um, these, these different books, you know, they're written, um, they're written in a way that you reference the verses. Um, so you reference the verses because there's learnings for everybody in all those verses. Like you'll learn something out of Matthew and out of Mark and out of Luke. But then as far as the prophetic side goes of things to come, you know, they're, they're talking to different people. Um, but then also it's in order to understand those different levels of the, the prophetic details, you then have to reference all of them. 
And sometimes you have to reference John, sometimes you have to reference others as well, or you have to get information from other areas. And so then you have to use the Bible also a bit like a dictionary because it'll say a word, like it might say a word like um, crowns, you know, um, or um, what's a good example? Let's have a look. Just one second. Um, yeah, like a highway, you know, we start getting into the conduit of the upper pool and then we learn it's a water course and then we learn it's, um, you know, it all comes down to, you know, this other section and we learn it's a river. <laughs> okay. So we learn a highway is a river and we have to literally see, go through all these different sections of the Bible to understand what it means. And so that's the brilliance of the book is that the, the book is just written in this incredible way that you really have to look into it and really understand it in, or seek the meanings in order to chase what it means. It's, it's might There might be a literal meaning, um, but there might also be another meaning as well. So that's why everybody translates it different. And, and it's why it's kind of silly that everybody argues over it because... You know, like if you have a look at the the beast, um, the the beast in Revelation and things like that, um, that appear before the throne. There's so many different elements to that. Like I started digging into that, and I, I'm, you know, I'm not lost, but it's just so much. You know, there's so many different layers upon layers upon layers, and you end up with this like in giant page of things um, to understand it all. So it's um. It's a very, very clever book and it's incredible. And so I'm going to keep diving into this. I just wanted to show you this quick one. And um, yeah, I'm going to get back into my, my routine of, of study and uh, while I work on some other things. So I hope you got something out of this and I hope it blesses your day. All right. God bless, guys. Maranatha.